Rigsters here, back with another episode of DCS F16 tutorial series. This time I'm going to go through the TACAN. So what is TACAN? It's basically a navigational aid that you can use by radio frequencies to get you closer to the airfield and also to air refuel tankers, which this game features quite a bunch of them. The F-16 can also air refuel as well, so let's get started. So, to get into TACAN, I press the one button just above 4. This is the TACAN overview on the top right corner, which is your DED. This is your data entry display screen. And to find out what TACAN frequencies you need to do in order to get to the airport in this case if I'm going to press F10 and I'm going to click on Kobo Eddy right here by zooming in you can also click on it zoomed out but it's easier to click on zoomed in and if you move down over to this box right here not all airfields have TACAN so in this case it's 67X you know, if it's a KBL for short, not all airfields will have this, so you got to make sure if you want to use TACAN, make sure it actually has it, because not all of them do. So, how do you put that in? Well, you go back to the ICP panel right here, press 6, 7, and then enter. And right now, you'll hear this annoying beep sound, and see audio panel for the tack in which is like next to your throttle here you just scroll that down turn it off and you're almost there what you have to do next is to verify the TCN is in T slash R mode and to do that in this same panel you just press this little dauber switch that's below 8 and 9 right once you just click on the SEQ side and you can also find this with HOTAS stuff too. Um, that is an optional but useful function. You'll see that it's in TCN T slash R. That is the mode we want. And you go, well that's great, but how do I, where's the TACAN? Well, the TACAN information, I'll put it in autopilot real quick here. So, down below here, this is your TACAN a navigational aid display panel. Right now, it's in default steer point GPS nav mode. To change the modes, you press this M right here once, then twice. And I will say on the bottom next to CRS what mode it's currently in. Now we're in what's called TACAN mode. So this is the very basics of getting to that mode. However, we still need to get a course line so that it's more precise so we can actually land there with an overhead brake. So you're getting a two for one today. So if I hit right shift K and I scroll with the right bracket key to get to Kobo Eddy, it will say it at the bottom here. We're going to scroll to like say page 11 if you're using a default keyboard. And what we're looking for is a course line. You don't have to worry about all this we Google information what we need is just these two numbers right here either 244 or 064 you might be wondering well why do you care about those numbers well if you want to approach the airfield on final from one direction you would move the course knob to 244 in this case or you can adjust it and change it to 064 for this demonstration, I'm going to change it to 244. It's kind of hard to see, but I'll point my mouse right here is where I'm reading it. It's just number right here is where I'm reading it. Don't worry about these other numbers over here. You just want to worry about these two right here. That's how you can get the course line to work for the tack end station. So we we'll close the D board. And then what you do is we adjust the CRS knob just by scrolling the mouse wheel or using the slider, if you have that bound, to 244. And you want to be exactly precise with these. So you want one that's easy to stop and start for the turn. Right there. 
So now, we just need to understand what to do next. So right now we're currently flying away from it in nautical miles. We want to turn back towards it. So what? how do I translate these number streaks? Well, the, the airplane symbol is called the aircraft symbol. This little white T looking cross that is your aircraft. The thick blue line is your course deviation line. So we gotta turn towards the course deviation line to correct the heading. The white triangle right here is your to and from indicator. The line you mainly need to look for is the bearing pointer. Well, what's one's that? It's the one outside of these three boxes. It's this blue arrow right here is your bearing. The one inside, and that usually trips me up a lot, is the course pointer. Like it points like a suggested course to get there. So, I'm going to zoom out and then turn to the left a bit. So, when you're flying around and stuff, you usually will glance at this information. You won't be like down, looking head down the whole time <laughs> while doing that because you could glide or hit a mountain or something. So, we don't want to do that. But as you can see, as I'm correcting the course, you can also use the outside compass navigation. In this case, it's between 210 and 240 compass heading. If you look at your ticker tape here, you can also see in default mas master nav mode that you can also see your bearing there as well. What I want to do is obviously to close the distance. One important thing with TACAN is it's not GPS accurate, meaning that there is some minor mileage differations in terms of the tower. It gets yeah, very close, but it's not going to put you directly on the runway. It's going to get you extremely close, and then you make visual and go from there. So in this case, I want to be slightly offset, so I'm going to just level out the plane just a little bit towards that way. So what you want to do is eventually correct the bearing heading by glancing at this thick line that's on the white dot right now. That's the scale. This is what those dots are. As you get closer, the scale decreases. So it gets more precise up to what TACAN can realistically do for you. So while I'm doing that, to make this task a little easier, I turned on the default autopilot mode. This right here is your autopilots. For now, I would recommend practicing just with pitch hold. That's the mode you're most likely going to use very often. What pitch hold does is it holds your plane straight and level, even more so than the default fly-by-wire system that just holds it to a 1G sustain. So it keeps you straight and level, and you can just simply roll the aircraft around. But you don't want to overroll it, otherwise it will shut off by itself. If you pull, yank the stick, or if you press the AP off with either the mouse or HOTAS buttons. So we're going to speed up time just a little bit here. And as you notice, right here, is the lines will start getting uh, closer to the center. Now I'll go back to normal speed. So that means I need to start correcting my turn. I need to start turning closer to the right so that way I intercept the course. And if I look outside the cockpit, it should get me within the TACAN interface. Or not the TACAN interface, my apologies, the TACAN radio beacon. Now level out again, speed up time. Okay, so we slowed down time a bit. So for the overhead brake, I need to lower altitude. I see the visual of the runway, so I don't need to use the TACAN anymore because the radio station is not directly on the runway, it's very close to the runway to get you there. 
So I'm gonna idle the throttle. And I'm not necessarily the best at landing, especially if overhead brakes to the F-16. But the general rule of thumb is you want to make sure you're offset either to the left or right of the airfield. Altitude's about 1,200 to 1,800 feet. Don't fret or worry if you can't do precisely intensive feet. As you get more practice or if you <laughs> get better at doing it, you can eventually get very close to this by the book values. It's just there to get your good baseline and to keep you on schedule. That's what it's intended to do. And this recommended speed is around 300 knots. Sometimes I do 350 depending on conditions, but generally no higher than 350. Right now I'm higher than 350 because I'm trying to rapidly descend so I can actually uh, do this correctly, or at least within reason, because I got feedback from my landing video and they want to see an overhead brake, so you get that too for the tack in. <laughs> and an overhead brake, two for one. So I'll just glance at the runway real quick here, glance at the altitude. Okay, now I can add power a bit. Don't know why. Oh, you know why? It's because I forgot to turn off the <laughs> the autopilot. Yeah, if you forget to turn off the autopilot, your plane will behave a little weird because it's trying to correct itself. So I had to adjust it with trim to get it back straight level. That can happen too. So with the tack can here, we are definitely uh, at least more than a mile away so we can do our break because that happened so fast. So you want to do a straight level turn, throttle to idle, do like about two and a half to three G turn, and then ease up as it on it as you get slower. Try to keep it level with reason, and don't fret if you don't. It just takes practice. All right, so now I'm going to deploy the landing gear, and we're a little bit crooked because you know. Morning, morning. It's just the way it goes. Alright. Now we're going to deploy the speed brakes. Make sure that's out. It's a little hard to see, so look at the indicator. Yep, it's out. And we're still a little high, so I need to adjust myself a little bit here. There we go. Need to add a little power. We don't want to be descending too low. We don't want to be too low that I can't correct it either. Like I said in the previous video, landing this plane can be a challenge. And I'm probably a little bit too fast, so this is going to be probably a rough one. So I'm going to pitch so that the sight is, idle down. Keep it not much higher than 10. Ooh. Yeah, it's a little tricky sometimes. Okay, just keep arrow breaking by pitching back, keeping it at the 10 or just a smidge above it. Let the nose gently come down. Then use those wheels. Steering and brakes. Pop the air brakes out to maximum. This is what it looks like outside the plane when you do that. Once all wheels are on the ground, that's how you can get maximum arrow brake and pitch up because we're below 50 knots. There we go. Wow, not the smoothest landing in the world, but that's kind of what it looks like outside the plane. I know I kind of fumbled with the views a little bit there, but that's kind of what it would look like if you try to attempt a smooth landing <laughs> doing an overhead brake, or at least a form of an overhead brake. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. On the next time on the S16 series, it'll be time to start doing some basic air to ground weaponry and or some more uh, flying operations. So hope you enjoyed this video. This is Rickster's Journey, signing off.